so here in Houston, we're a big metropolitan area, and and uh, you know we too are right at about the you know the four percent mark in getting the bivalent uh, uh, vaccine out, and that's in spite of our efforts. So we, you know one of the things that we do here, and many other communities do, is that we know we've got our our social vulnerability index. We know which communities have higher rates of illness and and other social vulnerabilities. We then overlap that with the uh, vaccination rates within those communities. And we use that to target our number one communities for us, the health department, to get into those communities that, that uh, that's how we prioritize what communities we're gonna, we're gonna go into. And so we've been using a lot of things that have already been talked about. We're using the, uh, the trusted ambassador, we're using community health workers. We're being uh, really uh, hard and heavy, learned a lot about how to communicate in, with the public in a world where there are literally thousands of different sources of information. And um, I'm probably the oldest one on this, uh, this uh, thing here today. But you know, when I was a kid, there were basically three networks. And I grew up up in Buffalo, New York. And so we had the, the three major networks. And then it was really grainy, but you could get two Canadian stations. And, and that, that was it. And then there was the, the printed newspaper. And that was a source of information. Well, today, with social media in particular, there are so many different sources of information that we, we found that we we're constantly being accused of, you're not getting the information to me. And I, so we started talking, well, how do you get your information? And they would tell us about somebody's blog that I'd never heard of before. And I said, well, did you try the Houston Chronicle? Did you try, you know, no, no, I don't get my information that I get it from. And so we had a pivot um, and, and we are continuing to have to do that to get creative with how we get the information out uh, to educate folks to make, their, to make their decisions. And then the other thing that I would I'd also sort of use as a, as a throwback to, uh, to my childhood is that I, you know, I grew up, uh, in the age when some of our vaccine preventable illnesses that we have vaccines for today, we didn't have, or they weren't as widespread back then. And I'm thinking in particular of measles and polio. And so as a child, I had both forms of measles. And I remember my grandmother who lived with us being very upset about that. And I've, I've shared this story many times that, that, you know, as a little boy, I didn't, I thought I had done something wrong. And so I was sort of locked away in my room anyways, because I had measles. And I, you know, and I felt bad that grandma was upset with me because I loved my grandmother. She was wonderful. And then, you know, years later, I finally, you know, got up the nerve to ask my mother about that. What was grandma so upset with me about? I was just a little kid. I got infected. I didn't try to. She said she wasn't upset about that. She was worried that you were going to get sick because at that point, measles was prevalent enough that all adults knew that some children would suffer some terrible consequences from the measles. They also knew that pregnant women and their unborn children were at high risk. And what grandma was upset about wasn't so much that I was sick. He said there was a woman who lived three, three doors up the street who was pregnant at the time. And, and I also went to school with a young boy who had polio and he had braces on both legs and he used crutches and he had thick glasses and he wore hearing aids. But the difference was we lived in a time in America when all of us got to see the negative, the horrible negative impacts of vaccine today, vaccine preventable illnesses, yet we today live in a society where public health is very much a victim of its own successes. We don't get the support that we need, whether it be from the states, the federal or philanthropic, because we don't have these terrible experiences that I am old enough that as a child, I, I got to, to live through it. And today parents don't, don't have that appreciation for it. And so, so it's, it's just a different time. And it, it's unfortunate that we have this extra added burden of trying to educate the, the public. And, and even with COVID, and the many, the, the million plus lives were lost here in America. And I also work, I'm not only the, the health authority in the health department, but I'm also the medical director for our fire department. We lost several firefighters to COVID, young, otherwise healthy men who were you know, fully engaged in very strenuous jobs, who caught a, a, a vaccine preventable virus. And, you know, and I went to their funerals. And so um, you know, I, I just want to underscore my final comment is underscore that the, the pandemic is not over. We are in a much better position today. And, and Chrissy mentioned you know, our use of wastewater. And here in Houston, I'm happy to report that our numbers here locally are going down uh, quite low to some of the lowest values we've seen in a very, very long time. But we can't take our eye off the ball. So if you look at and see what's going on in Europe, there are multiple nations in Europe where it looks like BA5 is coming up again. Perhaps that's due to people dropping their guard. Perhaps that's due to weather change. Perhaps that's due to people not getting boosters. Uh, but the numbers in several European countries are starting to go up and we're hearing rumblings about that perhaps in the Northeast United States. So this isn't over yet. This is not the time to drop our guard. This is not the time to forget because as Christy also pointed out, we still have several hundred people per day who are dying from this virus. And each and every one of those is potentially preventable. if 
the individual were vaccinated, and just as importantly is the people in their world, because every time somebody contracts COVID and dies from it, it's because they caught it from somebody else. You don't spontaneously develop uh, COVID-19 disease. Somebody generally and inadvertently infects you with it, and then you go down your own individual path of how sick you may or may not become. So this is not over. We've got a lot of work to do. It's not time to drop our guard. Uh, times are better, but it is not time to drop our guard. And with that, I, I hand it back over uh, to Chrissy.